Okay, this tactic is going to be on an HQ unit. It's going to be on the Canonus. It's um, sort of a, a customizable HQ. It's one of the two that, that isn't named in the um, Sisters of Battle Codex. You know, the, the Canonus actually got a downgrade from previous codex, but uh, she's not necessarily a bad choice. There are some uses for her. She's a base 65 points, cheapest HQ in the codex. She's a uh, Independent character, infantry. She wears power armor, so three up save. She has a bolt gun. She has a bolt pistol. She has frag and crack grenades, pretty much just like all battle sisters. She has an act of faith, um, so that means she benefits from the act of faith of other units as well as her own act of faith. So, in that, she's actually uh, unique for the HQs. Um, she has shield of faith, so she has that. 6 up invulnerable save. She is stubborn. Uh, and what does her act of faith do? It, if she uses her act of faith, it gives a plus 1 initiative and preferred enemy until the end of the assault phase for her unit. It's unfortunate that this only works in the assault phase because uh, preferred enemy is great when shooting, but when it's in the assault phase, uh, it's only going to work for, for Overwatch. But that is important to remember. She does have preferred enemy for Overwatch, so uh, if she's attached to a squad that has you no know, acts of faith, um, her her power is going to uh, is going to work. It's going to give them preferred enemy. And the FAQ says, can allied independent characters benefit from act of faith if they have joined an affected sisters of battle unit? Meaning, if a um, commissaire or Yarek or uh, Primary Psyker were attached to the canonist, did they benefit from the uh, Act of Faith? The answer is no. Um, do Acts of Faith affect allies who have joined or been joined by Sisters of Battle independent characters or units? The answer is yes. So she could join a guard unit um, and then that unit would benefit from her Act of Faith. She can be attached to Blood Brother units, so the Imperial Guard. Um, how much does this help you? Well, she is stubborn, so uh, she would give the Imperial Guard units the stubborn uh, boost, which means that their morale would never drop below 10. So what does she, she uh, have for options? She can take a chainsword for free. Uh, that would it's probably a bad option. She can take a storm bolter for three points. It's an assault weapon. It will replace that bolt gun. Uh, eh, not necessarily a bad choice because she can be independent. She's on her own if she really wants to. But it's probably not the greatest choice. She can take a power weapon. It says sword in the codex, but FAQ says weapon. So you could give her a power maul, making her strength five. You could give her a power axe, making her uh, strength four, AP two. Um, and so there's some options there. You can give her a power sword. Uh, you could give her combi, flame room, melter, or plasma. Um, that's all for 10 points, and uh, I, I don't think that's actually worth it, because they're one-shot weapons. She's probably better off with one of the pistols. But you never know. It depends on what you're sticking her with. She can take the Condemner bolt gun. <laughs> I, I'm still convinced it's a really dumb weapon to take one-shot against psychics. Um, she can take a plasma pistol or an inferno pistol, and so she can either take the plasma pistol or the melta pistol, basically. Um, these aren't bad because they're going to puncture any armor, AP 2 or 1. She can take an eviscerator for 25 points, uh, unless you're putting her in a dedicated close combat unit. I don't see why you would do that, and being that she's a character and can be challenged and, and might be challenged by a monstrous creature. The Eviscerator would give her all of her attacks, but um, it goes on initiative one, so she would be strength six. Uh, she could take melt the bombs for half the, the cost, actually not half the cost, or, sorry, one-fifth the cost, five points for a melt the bomb. She can use those against monstrous creatures now in a challenge, you know, if like a Tyranid or a Wraith Lord or something challenged her, then she gets to use her melt the bomb versus the uh, Eviscerator. Uh, she can take a Rosarius for 25 points, which would give her a 4-plus invulnerable save. And that's not a bad option if she's going to be one of your HQs. Certainly, she's going to be your Warlord, but I don't see that happening very often. Um, okay, she could um, potentially 
replace her bolt gun and bolt pistol with power weapons so she could have two power weapons. I've never seen anyone do this, but if, in that case, she would have uh, an extra attack for being double weapon wielding. Um, okay. So, what's her base stat line? You know, this girl uh, has a weapon and ballistic skill of 5, so she's very good. Um, she's really good at shooting, obviously. If she's with a shooting unit, that, that's pretty helpful. Uh, if she's manning something like a quad cannon or a, a Icarus Laz cannon. She's standard sister's stat line, strength, toughness, uh, both 3. Um, she's a standard HQ, so she has three wounds, um, but she does not have Eternal Warrior. Nothing in the Sisters Codex does. She has Initiative 4, so she's uh, as fast as a uh, Space Marine, which which is pretty good. If she gets her Active Faith off, she's going to be Initiative 5. So, um, that makes her better than a Space Marine on the Assault. And... But it, and it's going to boost her unit up, and if it's a sister's unit, it'll probably boost them up too. Uh, same as Space Marines. Um, she gets three attacks, base. She has a pistol, so she's going to have four, and uh, that's that's pretty nice. She's leadership ten. It's never going to change because she's so stubborn. Uh, so so that's what that's what her basic stat line is. So why do people take her? You, and the answer is you don't often see people take cannonesses. Not anymore. But, uh, but they do have a use. I mean, she's the cheapest HQ, so if you're going to take a double force org, you're probably not taking it for the uh, HQ choices. You might be, because you want to take Uriah and St. Celestine or something like that, but you're, you're probably taking it so that you can take, uh, you know, Sister's uh, heavy support or fast attack or something, and uh, in that case, you... Um, you might want to take the cheapest HQs. Uh, when I've seen the uh, six exorcist lists run, you have to m minimize all other points, and so the uh, HQs are one place to do it. You just knock it down to a cannoness or two cannonesses. If you're going to run the maximum pentaden engine list where you're fielding you know, multiple squads, something like six squads of pentaden engines, um, you almost have to take the cannoness at 2,000 points, otherwise you, you can't fit the list in. So she's uh, she's pretty useful there. You know, she's a generic character, so she's uh, she's going to be able to be used in tournaments or uh, local game clubs where people don't want to have any independent characters that are uh, that are named, and then there are tournaments to do that. So that's a time you'll see her see her fielded. You know, uh, otherwise she's not the greatest choice. I've, I've used her several times, but. Uh, She's usually the backup HQ, or I'm, I'm trying to field a number of, of heavy supports or something, and, and the only way to do it is to have the minimal cost HQ unit, so uh, that's the canonist.